Hey, what's up guys, Ruben here. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my, my experience after you know 10 years of personal development. It's been over 10 years, like 12, 13 years. And I, I wanna share with you because I've learned a ton. I've learned so much. I made a ton of mistakes. I've learned from them. And I wanna share my experience with you. Uh, I know the, the channels, it's usually about anxiety and anxiety attacks, right? But that the reason you want to overcome that is to live a better life. And that's why this video is going to help you understand where exactly that fits in, where your recovery, why your recovery is so important and where that fits into this bigger picture that you call life, right? So my, I first caught on to this whole personal development thing. I was, I remember I was training Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the time, right? The whole thing, jiu-jitsu, I would, it was all about self-improvement. That's when I first caught on to um, improving yourself, you know, living daily like uh, a champion mindset, if you will, right? Growing each day, becoming better and better each day. That was the whole philosophy behind the, the jiu-jitsu, in the jiu-jitsu world. And I remember at the time I was about 25 25, 26 years old, and um, I was training under my coach. He's this Bibiano Fernandez. He's this, you know, world-renowned, famous uh, MMA star, right? And I was training under him, and I had this pattern where I would train. For, I would train for a little bit, and then I would be off. I'd be off like partying and hanging out with people. Not that I was extremely social, but I had, you know, toxic family members and friends that I would hang out with and, and drink with and party with and carry on with. So I, I would go and do that and then I'd show up to training for a little bit. And But the thing was, is I was extremely, extremely talented in in the sport. And so he was seeing that I would come in and I would just train just a little bit, but I would improve and I'd get better than everybody else very, very fast. And I remember he he looked at me and he was like, what the hell are you doing with your life? Kind of a thing. And uh, I was like, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, you can be so good. You can be so good. He was, he was Brazilian, so he had an accent. He said, you can be so good. And um, so I, and I, I started um, kind of dismissing what he was saying. I was like, yeah, whatever. And he said, he looked at me and he's like, you could be greatness. Like you could do big, big things in life if, if you get your shit together. Um, and, and I remember my reaction was, I, I laughed it off. I went, <laughs> I looked away and then I looked up and, uh, he was still looking at me and I, and I, I thought to myself like, what the hell? This guy actually believes in me. He actually, cause you know, I, I'm 25 years old then nobody's ever kind of told me I could do big things in life at that point. You know, my parents used to say, just, you know, go to school and you can do this and do that. But they never actually believed it. They just, you know, going through the motions of being a parent. Um, so for the first time, there was somebody who told me I could do big things. And the way he looked at me, I remember he, he actually believed it. <laughs> like he actually believed in me. The first time, I remember that feeling. There, you know, it, only, it always takes one person, right? That was, that was my person that actually looked at me and told me, um, you know, I could do big things and I could be great. So that was a huge moment when I saw the way he held eye contact. His body didn't move. He didn't flinch or anything like that. Full belief. And so after that, then I got onto this whole personal development thing because, you know, I was going to get out there and start crushing my goals and achieve, achieve, achieve. And uh, this, just a heads up though, that was, it, it was going to be, um, the, you know, there was good and bad to it, but it initially it led to a disaster. Why? Because coming from toxic, you know, a toxic family of origin, toxic friend group, you know, low self-esteem, high anxiety, um, you know, an addictive personality, all of these things combined, it led to me getting onto this personal development thing to increase my self-worth. So one of, one of the main things that I was after, initially I set the goal, I was going to go back to school. You know, I, I did my first degree. I, would, I did it in computer science. I was going to go back. I was going to try and get into med school. 
So I went back and I remember I, cr I crushed the goals. You know, I was doing the personal development. I was all over YouTube and it was all about cut those toxic people out of your life. Don't worry about what other people think about you. Um, you know, that hustle culture, like get on your goals, get on success. I was devouring that content. And then I, you know, I was going to school and getting the grades I needed to and all that. You know, the first, the first degree, you know, I had about a B average, right? Mediocre. Uh, you know, I didn't take it seriously. I was partying the whole time. The second degree, I, I did what my coach wanted me to do. I got my shit together. And the second degree was flawless. It was like a 4.0, like A, a average, perfect degree. And then I started applying into medical school. But looking back, I was a lot happier during the first degree because I was connected to people. It, it, it wasn't necessarily that I was um, in healthy relationships or anything like that, but I was just around people the whole time. I wasn't focused on the studies. I was just focused on trying to hang out with people. For, and then, but on this time around, I was absolutely, I, ha I had the grades, I, you know, I was proud of the achievement, whatever, but I was absolutely miserable. I lost my relationships. I cut, you know, got, took that thing so seriously, cut people off if they're not helping you move towards your goals and success and all that stuff. C lost all my relationships. Um, not completely. They were there, but I was just distant, you know, and I was just, um, disconnected from everybody, isolated, constantly just working hard, grinding every day, day in, day out. And I, I was absolutely, I was extremely unhappy. I was dealing with severe addictions issues. I remember even pleading with my, um, with my wife, she's my girlfriend at the time though. But I remember telling her, I was like, I gotta, I, I, I need out. Like, I can't do this anymore. I cannot do it. I cannot sit here and just grind my life away. It just feels completely unfulfilling. And um, something's got to change. So then I started to wonder, right? Because at, at one point it was all about people, right? Just trying to hang out with people, whatever. If the, even if the relationships were codependent and toxic or whatever, still hanging out with people all the time. And then on this other extreme, I was just all isolated, all about just getting to my goal, doing whatever it takes, working hard. Both made me unhappy. So I was at that point, I was... I was totally confused. And so at that time, I also, I came across this thing called the Harvard study. Really important study. It's like one of the longest standing studies. It's like 80 or 90 years it's been going on. And essentially what the study did, this is, this is really important, a really important part of this video that I really want you to get. Because the, the study, essentially, it followed Harvard graduates, both from uh, you know more impoverished backgrounds and also more affluent backgrounds. So right? The, the rich kids and also the, the poor kids or whatever you want to call them. They both all of them, they went to Harvard and over the years, what they noticed, it didn't matter if they came from, um, you know, dear, dire circumstances where there's trauma, there's, there's uh, mental health issues, poverty, all that stuff, or they came from more rich and supportive environments. The only thing that mattered across the board is that they had good personal relationships. And I cannot highlight that enough for you. Good personal relationships, there's absolutely no substitute for it. And so in this study, it didn't matter if they came from, uh, you know, the poor background or the more affluent background, that was no indicator of their happiness, which is what the study is after. It's the study on, on happiness, Try to, trying to figure out what makes humans happy. Time and time again, every single year, every single time they, they, they take a look at the results, hands down, it's always personal, good personal relationships is the strongest factor in happiness. And so what does this have to do with anxiety attacks or social anxiety, things like that? So there, there, here's a book here. I just want to, I'm going to use this book to really kind of, um, anchor in this concept, okay? Um, so it's called, uh, if we can see it there, The Globalization of Addiction, A Study in Poverty of the Spirit. And there's this, this scientist or this uh, researcher here, Bruce K. Alexander. So essentially what, what he did was when, 
when they first came across addictions, right, and trying to trying to trying to help people and get a, get a solution for people suffering from addiction, okay, this was back the first model that came out. What they did is they did a study, and what they did is they put all these rats, it was a study of rats, all these rats in a cage. And so they put a bottle of drugs there. I think it was like a bottle of heroin or something like that. And they noticed there were only a select few of rats that would go and drink the heroin. And then those would become like the addicts. So what that told them was that there were certain rats that had characteristics of an addict, right? These rats are inherently flawed. They got something wrong with them. That's why they go and drink the heroin. But what this, what, what this um, researcher did, which, is, which was such a big thing, so he actually did an, another study, and this study was all about, it's called Rat Park, right? So, and so what he did is he built um, you know, the, this park where the rats could have fun, and they were all together, and they were in connection with each other, and they all had activities and all these different things to do. And what he found is when they were in this nice, cohesive connection this, in the society working all together, no rat went and um, drank the, the heroin, okay, or the drugs. And so what he argues is that the only reason somebody develops an addiction is because they lose contact with people. They lose social connection, okay? So, and, and I don't mean that uh, an addiction as either drugs or alcohol. I'm gonna read this off to you a little bit here. But he says, addictions are, are, are far greater than that, right? There, there are drug addicts and alcoholics throughout the city. Here in Vancouver, we have some of the highest addictions rates here, right? Um, so there's drug addicts and alcoholics throughout the city, but under the radar, right? A lot of these go undetected. So gambling addicts is in gambling addicts in the casinos, money and power addicts in the financial district, video game addicts at their computers, television addicts on their couches, bulimics at the junk food stores, prescription drug addicts at the pharmacies, work addicts at their desks through the night, exercise freaks at the gyms love addicts in other people's beds, tobacco addicts on in the cancer wards, uh, zealots having hatching plots, no idea what that means. But as you can see, it, it's it, he's talking about a much wider spread issue. And the reason I'm talking about this is because anxiety does the same thing. It really isolates people. It really makes people feel different than other people. So a lot of the people I work with, a lot of them don't have the support they need. A lot of them aren't, are even scared to reach out and tell somebody that they have the problem. And so, hands down, they'll, they'll always have something else as well. They'll be, you know, to watch too much TV, play too much video games, some sort of escape, some sort of release that they have away from the anxiety. Because as you know, underneath all the addictions is that kind of core anxiety, that core self-esteem that rests underneath it. And so that's why recovery from anxiety, it's not only about just overcoming anxiety and going back to the way you were. It's overcoming it so you can reconnect and be connected with people moving forward. There's, like I said, like I was saying before, there's absolutely no substitute for your personal relationships. You overcome this this anxiety and you develop new habits and you transform into a new person so that you can live in consultation, in connection with everybody, with other people, with supportive people around you. Now, he also, one of the other things mentioned in, in this book is that um, Charles, there's Charles Darwin and like Einstein, these, these greats, right? So the most powerful, some of the most powerful minds of our time, they also mention in here and he quotes them that there's the 50%, only 50% of you is the personal development and the personal achievement, okay? The other 50% of you is your social connection, your connection to other people, okay? And just because you develop yourself so at such to such a high level personally, it doesn't bleed over into this, this area. There's no substitute here. So overall, the mistake that I made was over overcompensating on the personal development to the point where I'm trying to increase my self-worth, prove everybody wrong. 
I was overcompensating on this side. But now what I've what now what I've learned is that my personal development over here, I develop the skills, I develop things over here so that I can have better relationships, right? Then when I go get my energy in my relationships, that allows me to go more and and work on myself more and so they both now they both feed off of each other 50 percent and 50 percent and so i have those relationships as a support in every area of my life it doesn't matter if it's you know my coaching practice i have the the support i have the mentorship i have the relationships that support my growth in that area it, even fitness you know i have the coaches i have the gym i have the community to back me up there Mental health is the same thing. And so that's something that I, I really wanted to share with you because you have to have that in your life. You have to have witnesses to your growth, witnesses to what you go through in life. The challenges you go through, the pain you go through, right? The, you know, when, when you do have success, what does that all mean if you don't have people to celebrate that with, right? How unfulfilling is that? Right. So and that's another one of the the problems with our our society today is we we lack the mentors who've been through later stages in life to actually guide us along the way. That's a huge thing is young men, young women. They're not in touch on the emotional side and on a deeper level with with people who are older and have more experience with them to actually get those insights, to get those stories so that they can avoid that heartache or that those mistakes in the future or at least see that maybe they're heading in the wrong direction and pull themselves and, and get into a better path for, for their life moving forward. So I just wanted to share that with you. I really hope that that my experience, right, going super hard or, or just being completely codependent in toxic relationships, hanging out in that all day, that wasn't fulfilling. And then all of a sudden just going too hard on the personal success and the personal development, that wasn't fulfilling. But if you can combine them both, right, that's where your power is. If you can have all your relationships align to make the personal development better and then use the personal development to make your relationships even better and have them both feed off of each other, that's when you'll be truly happy. And so if it resonates with you, let me know in the comments what your experiences were. I would love to hear about it. Um, you know, what your trials and errors were. So looking forward to connecting with you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. All right, see you later.